Well, welcome. Fellowship with us and share God's love. A couple of announcements. Trunk or treat. Did you talk about that while I was gone? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's going on from 5.30 to 7 on Halloween out in the parking lot this year. Uh, charge conference is this Tuesday at 7, but because of the uh, COVID situation, it's going to be uh, only with the ad board. So we got that going. Is that virtual? And it is virtual, yep. So, so. do we have, uh, do we have an internet to be I will, I will work my ma internet magic. It's called a Wi-Fi hotspot. Some things I do know. <laughs> How do we do that? We still show up here or no? Yeah, just show up here and we'll put my computer at one end of the table so oh, okay. Dwayne can see us. Because I was going to say, Mary doesn't have that connection. So. So, are there any other announcements? There's a birthday tomorrow. There's a birthday? Would you put it back? <laughs> well, happy birthday. What? What is this? Eighty-three. Eighty-three on Wednesday. Oh my goodness gracious! Every day you defy the odds. <laughs> Taking you a long time to put that in there. Yeah. Well, eighty percent. You gotta count it. You gotta count it. Do we want to thank Happy Birthday, birthday to you? Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday, God bless you. Happy Birthday. Do we have any anniversaries this week? Oh, we forgot to bring ours. Ours was last week, the week before. When we were on vacation. Number 31. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Channel four. <laughs> it's genetics. I have nothing else to go to. <laughs> Only she'll put up with us, right? That's right. <laughs> okay, uh, well, let's sing number 75. You'll know this tune. Please. 
O oh, you who has given us eyes to see the light that fills this room, give us the inward vision to behold you in this place. O oh, you who has made us to feel the morning breeze upon our limbs, help us to feel your presence as we bow in worship of you. joys or concerns today? I'm just going to say it again. I get Zach and Hyder for Halloween. All right. Cool. Yes? I have a joy. My sister that we prayed for a time or two got a bad uh, surgery in this month and a half and found. Uh, I talked to her and she talked to me the other day. Oh. It was very, very nice. I, uh, I can just barely recognize her was a boy. So Good. she's thankful and uh, uh, her very first uh, meal was the day I talked to her and it was a cream of wheat. <laughs> <laughs> Did she make it with the lumps in it? <laughs> uh, Tom called me Friday and said that he is in Fresno, California getting ready for the grandson's wedding. Julie is in fact out there. She flew out and she comes back on the 11th. And then, of course, he's there for the winter months, but um, he has safety travels and all that good stuff. Okay. And then um, Christina called or mm -hmm. texted me, actually, yep. asked us to pray for her. She um, went to take her little dog out this week, I think it was Thursday, and he decided to go after a stray cat, and she wasn't aware of what he was doing, and he pulled her down the back steps. So she tumbled real good, broke three ribs, and right oh. down her side. And so she had to go to the doctor. So she asked for prayers for recovery. So that's why she's not with us today. Yes. Okay. 
Lori needs some prayers. Lori. Yep, for help. Okay. I have a joy. Okay. Speaking of weddings, my friend Carolyn is getting married this afternoon. Oh. She had her wedding originally planned for May of this year, and it got postponed due to COVID, but she and Joshua are getting married this afternoon. So. Wow. <laughs> it's a Catholic wedding, so we'll be there a while. <laughs> I was raised in that, I know. <laughs> Dawn said I could color, but I know that there's aerobics involved, so. <laughs> My cousin who had the car accident a couple weeks ago, she, uh, they did end up totaling her car, and she was able, with insurance money, to get a brand new one at $2,000 more than what they were the insurance gave her, so she had wow. a new car. So nice. she is thrilled to death to have a brand new car. <laughs> Good. And there was no serious injuries. So that was great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm thankful for uh, our fill in, Sandy Gaston. I hope uh, you enjoyed that. Yeah. And I'm thankful for our safe travels and for all that we got to experience on our vacation. Including fishing. <laughs> All right, let's be in time of prayer. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of wisdom, you have opened the path to life in Jesus Christ. Guide your church along that path as we embody your love for all people. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You speak your word of truth through the world and through your people. Open the hearts of the nations to the peace and riches found in service to others. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You break the chains of oppression and suffering. Free those bound by addiction. Give hope to those whose spirits are crushed and grant wholeness to all who are ill. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You bring your people out of slavery and lead them to freedom and new life. Lead all who are seeking to live life in your love and for your love and give them new birth to a living hope. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You announce your enduring covenant with all people through the witness of the saints. We thank you for all the faithful departed. By their examples, keep our hopes always fixed on you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Hear our prayers, merciful God. By your Holy Spirit, transform our lives to declare your praise 
and to make known your grace. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. thought I put the five verse one on there, but clearly I did not. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Our scripture reading today is Psalm 119 verses one through seven. Or I'm sorry, 19, 19. Thank you. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring the work of his hands. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their utterances to the end of the world. In them he has placed a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, it rejoices as a strong man to run his course. Its rising is from one end of the heavens and its circuit to the other end of them. And there is nothing hidden from its heat. The word of God for the people of God. Will you join with me in the prayer to the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. 
O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to talk to you like a guy who just got off a of vacation today, which is a good thing, <laughs> trust me, because <laughs> we are talking like, still about focusing on those things that are good in our world and things that bring us joy and make us happy. And um, today I want to do the first of a, of a two-parter. Uh, and this, uh, this one is wonder, and next week will be awe. Um, when I was in elementary school, every year we would um, go to the Hearst Planetarium in the Ella Sharp Park, which is in my hometown in Jackson. And <clears throat> I loved those trips. I don't know if you've ever been to a planetarium. But it's one of those things where you know you get to you get to sit back and it's dark and it's quiet and then they just project the night sky up into this dome. I even got to run the planetarium at, Al at Alma for a year when they were just starting it up again. And I would go down there as I was planning things, and then I would get done with my plan and I would sit in the chairs and I would just sit back. And I always loved looking up at the stars, and I loved being able to find all the constellations, you know? I got really good at it, because I spent a whole lot of my youth either camping or visiting my grandma up in Houghton Lake, or going on fishing trips up in Canada, and I was in scouting, so there was lots of camping involved with that. And it's just been a really long time since I've been able to actually look up and see everything. And finally, after a really long drought, I got to see it all again on vacation. And it only happened, because I didn't get to see it the first night, because the first night we were there, people were kind of wrapping up their weekends, and they were gonna be leaving on Sunday, but we spent uh, five days, probably, five full days there, or it was, uh, the people there were Dawn, me, the groundskeeper, and, uh, and this little old lady who was two cabins down from us who never left the cabin. <laughs> so there was no noise. There was no extra light. We could turn off the, the lights in our cabin and we could look up in the stars. And I saw constellations I hadn't seen in more than a decade. I could see uh, the King's <coughs> Crown. I could see Cassiopeia. <laughs> I could see all of Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. I could see all of Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. I could see um, Orion later in the evening. I could see the dolphin, which if you look up at night, it looks a little bit like a kite. I mean, I was naming off all these things. I saw Cygnus the Swan as it flies along the flow of, that, of the Milky Way. I could see the Milky Way. I don't know when the last time was that I saw that. And I just had a blast finding all the constellations that I hadn't seen in such a long time. And then finally, when I was done and couldn't pick out any more, there was nothing left. There was, there's nothing more for me to look for, no more patterns to find, nothing else to think of. All the patterns were gone, no more analysis. It was just me and the star. And that's when wonder returned. Wonder is one of those things that we've just kind of shut out from our lives. Abraham Joshua Heschel, one of my favorite writers, called wonder radical amazement. And for him and 
boy, after this, after that week, I can, I can follow him on this. Um, his understanding was that it's not belief or faith that makes religion. It is wonder. And it's been a long, long time since I felt wonder like that. I mean, I can think, I can count on one hand, less than one hand, really, the times I've really felt just this broad wonder in the world. Um, on one of those fishing trips that I mentioned in my youth, we were out at this lake that we shouldn't have gotten to, but thank God Uncle Jim doesn't care about that stuff. <clears throat> but <clears throat> we were driving back in the dark along this, it wasn't even a road, it was just like two ruts, you know, that led out to a road eventually. And <clears throat> I looked up and saw the Aurora Borealis. The only time in my life that I've ever seen them in person. And you can see pictures of them whenever you want. But it's not the same. And I wanted to take a, a picture of them, you know, back when you had film. But I was young and I was convinced that they wouldn't show up on the film. I don't know why I believe that, but you know, there I was. And, but I just remember looking up at it and just... What can I say? It was this green that I'd never seen before. And it moved like waves or like wind a little bit. It just kind of fluttered there in the sky. It was amazing. And I had to crawl around in the back of the vehicle and you know which where i hated to be when i was a kid remember when you were the station wagons that had the seat in the back and you hated being the one that was in the back because you had to stare at everyone behind you and kind of go hi right, this is awkward i don't know you but i crawled back there intentionally so i could just watch them the whole time And then there was the time that I went to the Grand Canyon. And again, you can see pictures of the Grand Canyon all you want. But there is nothing like walking up to the edge and having it just kind of come into view. And this is exactly what I said. <gasps> that was it. What else could I say? Well, yeah, basically that's it. <laughs> and then there was the birth of our daughters. You know, I guy, guys experience this differently, ladies. I don't know if you know this or not. <laughs> I mean, we get to see everything from the outside, and we know something's going on. And you'll tell us about it. Every now and then we'll feel the baby kick. I mean, you got this stuff going on the whole time. Guys are like, there's something in there. Okay, fine. Take your word for it. And then out it comes. And there's this life. And what can you say? It was one of those times where every emotion that I could possibly have ran through my head. At the same exact moment. It was like, wow, and ooh, and ah, and holy cow, what am I going to do now? <laughs> and there, are, there have been the occasional minor miracles, as I call them, that I get to wonder at. Uh, whenever I would plant a garden in our backyard or whatever, I would go out every day just to see what the progress was. And Dawn said I was going out and checking on my green children. <laughs> but it's, it's, it is a thing of wonder to see. All I did was, you know, make a little hole in the ground and plop a seed in there. And then to watch it happen. And all of those things, it's just... <clears throat> What 
Wonder silences us. Just leaves us speechless. What do you say when you're when you're laying on a dock in the north of Minnesota and the whole universe is stretched out before you? What can you say? And it becomes very clear that awareness of the divine begins with wonder. When I consider all the wonders your hand has made, what words can I speak, O oh Lord? And that's one of the reasons why I picked this psalm. Because they don't speak to us either. I think this is the, one of the greatest parts of the poetry of this psalm when it says there is, there is no speech nor are there words their voice is not heard and yet the very next thing their voice goes out through all the earth and their utterances to the end of the world they don't speak there's not a sound and yet they speak to us to all of us We humans have built a world of analysis and data. And I love it. I'm an old science teacher, okay? I, I have a degree in biology for crying out loud. I spent two years studying box elder bugs, folks. What about stink bugs? <laughs> they're relative they're relatives you know. and I can tell you I spent I, I spent time staring at those things under a microscope measuring every body part to find out which one would be the best to predict what stage of growth it was in I pulled them apart and pulled out I had to use a microscope and the tiniest tweezers I've ever used in my life which are impossible to use by the way when you've had caffeine <laughs> to pull out scent glands. Wow. And then I dropped those scent glands in a little vial of alcohol and then we sent them through spectral analysis and we figured out what was in them and then I took some out into the field and I would drop some on a cotton wad and see what the bugs did. And the It was all really cool and very scientific and I recorded everything in pencil, because, I mean in pen because you're not allowed to write in pencil. And in duplicate, by the way, so you have to keep moving that stupid copy paper in the next one. And I got it all documented. I presented it at the Michigan Association of, of uh, Zoologists and Entomologists. And I presented it at the American Society of Zoology and all this kind of stuff. And none of it really brought me wonder. And let's be honest. Who cares that I'm probably one of the world experts on box elder bugs? Every now and then I check. I get cited all over the place. We light up this world with street lights and 24-hour gas stations. <laughs> and we shut out the stars. And we think that if we know how something was made, that a river just gradually ate away at the, at the soil. And now, look, Grand Canyon. Ta-da, yeah. Or how it happens that, you know, the sun is sending off uh, solar flares and it gets captured in the magnetic field of the earth and, that, and they spiral around and then become superheated and it becomes plasma that shines as green light and ha ha aurora borealis or that there's conception and gestation and birth and voila child it seems that way to guys but you know <laughs> but we think that if we know how something was done that we can just move along. And we never consider why or who. 
It's easy to shut out God in a world that shuts out creation. It's easy to shut out wonder when you never have to wonder. When every dark corner is lit. And again, I'm not saying that it's bad. Like I said, I like science. But our world tends to lean on it too much. It's difficult in our daily lives to find wonder. I know that. Like I said, we shut out the dark and we just buzz through creation on, in our schedules and in our patterns. And I'm going to do something that's going to drive a lot of people crazy. And I'm not going to actually come to a conclusion in this sermon. I'm going to give you homework. And that is to take some time during this next week, whenever you can, and find wonder. It should be kind of easier in this time of year because the leaves are going to start turning. You know, the harvest is coming in. It's dark a little bit longer. But go someplace or make a, an effort to find some place where what is in front of you shuts you up <laughs> for just a minute. It makes you gasp. And then we'll talk about it a little more next week. Amen. peace and love of Jesus Christ, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and the power of God the Father. And throughout this week, may God give you just one thing, wonder. Amen. Amen.